at that. Okay, it is uh, 8.33. We've had to make a program adjustment, and we're pleased to have in studio with me um, Mayor, Major, I know he was a Major, K.L. Well, Keith uh, Williams. Uh, he's. Let me give you a little bit about this guy's um, background. He's Law Enforcement Instructor of the Year for the State of Missouri. He's 25 years in law enforcement. He's a second-degree black belt in how do you pronounce that? What is that? Aikijitsu. Aikijitsu. And I'll find out what that means later on. He's an instructor in arrest and control. He's a fit force officer, fitness coordinator, Cooper Aer 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 Aerobica instructor, physical fitness coordinator, former defensive tactics instructor, St. Louis, uh, is that uh, Metro Police Department? Correct. Former physical training instructor, St. Louis Metro Police Department, FBI defensive tactic instructor, and on and on. He's trained in counterterrorism and, and was that weapons of mass destruction, WMD, trained in hospital emergency incident, commander, and on. Trained thousands of police officers, corrections, and military officers. Uh, good, uh, good morning, Major. How are you? Good morning. Good. I can move that mic up there a little bit. Then. I'm going to be right. careful. I don't want to get you upset up in here. No, okay? we're good. Good. All I could do is holler. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> All I could do is holler. Can we open the door there, Howard, in case we have Lord Arkman here so I can I can make a beat of here? You you hey, listen. You you're quite an accomplished guy and all around fitness and physical training and things of that sort. You're working right now with uh, Dr. Michael Gurneen at the West End Chiropractic and, and Rehab Center. Correct. And you guys um I, we talked bits and pieces a couple of times at uh, about your motivation to start this fitness self defense training course. Is that is, is that is that correct? That is correct. Uh, okay. I was uh, working with um, uh, Dr. Gurdine. I'm a massage therapist, okay. also. Okay. And that's what kind of led me to Dr. Gurdine working in rehabilitation with the patients. And he mentioned to me about wanting to do a, a fitness program for some of his clients and patients. And I thought that was a good idea. But I wanted to also uh, enhance it by offering a self-defense aspect to it as well. So a person can become fit, lose weight, get stronger, and also uh, develop skills to defend themselves if they're faced with a violent encounter. Okay. And unfortunately, here in the metro area, it is not uncommon for s women, and here just even recently as we were talking, to be faced with a, a violent encounter. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, we, Absolutely. You uh, talked about the the young lady who lost the, the volleyball ex volleyball player who lost her life in the Central West End. Right. I think that's very fresh on people's minds. Uh, her particular situation, as well as the young lady who was jogging in Forest Park, and someone attempted to uh, molest her by striking her with a head, and she was. Uh, not far from Highway 40, so she was in a highly visible area, and still people uh, chose to try to attack her. So it's it's not uncommon. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, as a police officer, I've investigated hundreds of incidents of violence, and it, it's quite sad. But people who are predators out there, they don't care. And they have no reservation about harming you or your family or anyone with you. So I think we have to be proactive, and we don't want to be uh, victims. We want to be survivors, and that's mm -hmm. what I teach people. Okay. And, you know, when we think about a self-defense class, we think about young people. We think about primarily, don't we? Am I right or wrong? We're thinking about younger younger women, 35, 54, or something like that. Uh, majority of women, who perhaps, who are going to listen to talk radio are going to be seniors. And what? how could they defend? themselves normally aren't they aren't you always told give it up whatever they ask for give it up don't don't argue don't put up a strike of struggle or something but then just here recently we got to, there were reports fighting me heard it on the news last night uh, about a, some fool running around here he's not only content to take if people give him their purse or their belongings he shoots you anyway right right so what do you so what do you, what so what's your advice what what do you do you know every situation has to be taken on a case by case basis we always talk about the uh, totality of the circumstances and if whether you are 24 44 or 74 
there are things that you can do. And the first thing we have to come to grips with is being aware of our environment. Okay. So we spend a lot of times looking at the survival mindset of being aware of your environment, having strategies to defend yourself. And defending of yourself is not always uh, having skills where you learn how to kick, punch, and throw. It's also skills in knowing how to use your voice. It's also skills in knowing how to read a person's mannerisms that oftentimes will give you a heads up as if you're about to be a victim of a violent crime. So I spend a lot of time working with people to enhance the strengths because we all have strengths, but we all have limitations. So I mm -hmm. spend time working with people on an individual basis to give them the skills that bring out the best in them. When 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 are people most vulnerable? Is it when they uh, you, you you think about parking garages? I think I just had a case at Wash U here mm -hmm. got kidnapped a uh, a young woman, and, and and these are younger people who you would think could put up some kind of a resistance and what have you, but I guess it depends on the circumstance. Am I right? Thank you. Absolutely right. And I think one thing we have to keep in mind is that oftentimes we place ourselves in positions that give the criminal the advantage. Okay. We're walking around with our arms filled with groceries. We get to the car and we don't have our car keys out. We're going down dark, desolate streets when we know we've got that gut feeling telling us, you know what, we don't need to be here, but we mm -hmm. do it anyway because it's close. It's a shortcut. How many mornings I would be on patrol and see children, older folks, up and down the alleys in the middle of the night, early in the morning. I'm like, why are you walking down this dark, isolated alley? Criminals look for you to be isolated. See, you have to understand the criminal's mindset. And the criminal's mindset is, A, look for a victim, someone who's weak. Mm -hmm. B, look for someone who's isolated. And C, pick your point. Mm -hmm. And they they work just like we go to work every day. They go to work every day and they have strategies, methodologies and systems that they use to identify who they're going to run up on. They don't just choose just the next person who's coming around the corner. OK, a psychopath may. OK, but oftentimes the criminals who are out to get you, they have identified you and they're moving on you quick. Sometimes drugs overwhelm them. Sometimes the situations that they live in overwhelm them. But we have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. You are you a, a supporter of the conceal and carry thing? Do you think more people should be armed? I know some folk, and, and, and mostly it's men, you know, who, who you know, I'm, I, I got me something, I'm keeping me something in my pocket all the time, you know, whether it's I have it uh, legally or not, I'm going to have it. What did you see better to say, uh, you know, I'd rather be judged by a jury of six or 12 than carried by, you know, and Tony, please don't let that be Tony. I don't want to hear back from you, Tony. Don't you dare call into the show. Okay, but go ahead, Major. Okay. Now, I, um, I, I find value in concealed carry, but it's a question of training. It's a question of training, preparation, and mindset. Because keep this in mind, if you are armed and someone takes that gun from you, Guess mm -hmm. what just happened? Sure. You have just armed someone. Sure, sure. So not only should you have the capability to use that weapon, you have to have the capability to keep that weapon mm -hmm. because every time mm -hmm. you go into a situation, you bring a weapon to it. Yeah. And that's something you have to keep in mind. People ask me, well, what if someone comes at me with a knife? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Well, run, hide, or fly. Oh. Uh, dealing with a knife is very challenging. It's not like television. Wait a minute. Just when somebody comes at you with, you with a knife, you do what? Was run. Run, hide, or fly. Okay. Those are the best options. Okay. However, if none of those options are available and you have no other alternative, then you should have some basic skills. But it takes time. Okay. And the one thing you have to understand, because I've gone to several knife schools, and the first thing they tell you is if you're in a violent encounter with a knife, you're going to get cut. Okay. And sometimes people see in their own blood, it scares them. Okay. And they go into shock. They go into panic mode. So you have to learn to control your mind. It all starts with your mindset, okay. and that survival mindset is what gets you through the hard times. It's what gets you to be able to push through a situation that normally you might faint. I do a rape awareness program. I've worked with a lot of the hospitals in the area with the nurses, with the staff. And one thing you have to keep in mind, in questions of rape, I cannot say you must fight. You must fight all the time because that's a personal decision. But statistics have shown that women who fight 
do not fare less than those who don't. So if okay. you fight, at least you've got a winning chance. The lady in Forest Park who was attacked, she fought. Okay. And she may have been injured, but she was not molested. Okay. And so I personally am a firm believer in having skills to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And if someone tries to attack you, then you attack them. Okay. And that changes the mindset. It changes the dynamic. And these are the things I teach people to reinforce their ability to survive. You know, if I had a young daughter or, you know, a uh, uh, I even mentioned this to my wife. I, I just jokingly, I said something to her about this class. I said, "Well, you know, maybe you ought to consider, it, you know, because they tell us about the components of the class." And again, we're talking with the major uh, K. L. Williams, and the the, the 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 rank major is from Missouri Police Corps. What is Missouri Police Corps? Missouri Police Corps was a division of the U.S. Justice Department that was designed to take college graduates, train them to be police officers, place them in departments around the country, and give them the skills to deal with counterterrorism, okay. weapons of mass destruction, as well as being more sensitive and have more empathy to the citizens on the streets. Okay, okay, okay. Well, again, I was talking with them. I said, well, maybe you're out and about businesswoman, you know, coming and going. Uh, you know, let's face it, you know, nobody, nobody's going to get in the house that, uh, every night before the sun is down, mm -hmm. nobody's going to do that. You know, people have to have a freedom, have to have the freedom to move about and do their business and things of that sort. Now it's going to start getting dark earlier. Obviously, criminals prefer the, 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 the dark of the night to, to do whatever they might want to do. That would present more opportunities for them. Am, am, am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that ties and piggybacks on isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't see me. I'm isolated. You know, you've got tall bushes around the home, places where people can hide, uh, places where people can uh, make you a victim by surprising you. Surprising you. So we have to be proactive. See, sure. too often we are reactive. Sure. It's only until a situation happens that we say, okay, now I need to do something about yeah. it. My advice is to be proactive. Don't wait to be a victim. Don't mm -hmm. wait to have someone try to rob you or hurt you or assault you. Develop what you need to come out on top. And I'm not saying we're training you to be a mixed martial artist, cage fighter, or you're going to be on television fighting for the world championship. But one thing ladies always have as their advantage is the element of surprise. Most men, I would say 99% of the men listening or walking the streets believe that they can defeat any woman walking around. So already men have a certain attitude about, well, if this is a female, I can defeat her, no problem. So a female should use that as to her advantage and develop the skills and understand that she can be successful. So he grabs her and she strikes back real quickly, kicks him in the groin or judo chops him in the throat or something like that. He's not prepared for that. He's not expecting that. That's He's expecting her to just go, you know, OK, listen, I'm enjoying this conversation. I hope you are, too. And if you have a call or a comment for Major Williams, you can give us a call at 314-880-0808. That's our local number, 8800808. Toll free one eight seven seven nine twenty WGNU. We're going to come back and talk about what are the components of this class and why people ought to get in touch with you or Michael or Dr. Gertie. Stay with us. We'll be back. Okay, we are back. It is eight forty eight. How about that? How would we ride on time here this morning? Hey, good Thursday morning, folk. I'm Hank Thompson. Have a good. Wonderful conversation here. I'm learning something and, and, and what have you with uh, Major Keith Williams, and he is uh, Law Enforcement Instructor of the Year for the state of Missouri. Well, con you. congratulations. Thank I understand you. that you work with one of my captains, yes. Captain Barry Barry, who yes, was indeed. actually the commander of the police academy. And uh, you were the trainer. Correct. The trainer Actually, I, ha I owe him for allowing me or sending me to the FBI school. Is that right? That helped propel me even further. I couldn't make I had the no name right. I was, he says, Williams, Williams, I know that name. But he's getting old now, so he, he don't remember very much. <laughs> George, you tell him I said that. Another one of our captains listens. Listen, okay, now here's what we – I want to get something out of this, we, what we thought we might also do since Dr. Gurdine is one of our longtime sponsors, loyal – Longtime family friend, we're going to do a self defense uh, uh, attack a tip each week. Every week, we're going to have you call in and give us another tip. But for today, tell us about the class, the components of the class, what people can learn, what you're actually doing the class and when the classes are being held and where. Okay, Hank, I appreciate that. Uh, well, in a nutshell, the program is called Countermeasures. 
Uh, it's the formulation of over 20, almost 25 years of background and experience I have from training law enforcement and military units. And I put a program together that I wanted to make uh, easy and available for the average citizen to learn and use. Uh, we spend a lot of time uh, working with people in fitness because, let's face it, it doesn't matter how much skill you have, if you are not able to move your body to some degree, it's not much you're going to be able to do. Let's just mm -hmm. be realistic. Mm -hmm. So I work with everyone uh, from an individual basis doing personalized training as well as classes. We do have classes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 4.30 to 6 p.m. at the uh, Rehab Center, which is at 305 Union Boulevard. Uh, the number is 314-361-4650. And we spend time working with the groups, but I just want to mention I also work with individuals. So if that particular time frame does not work for you, I can also schedule or something as an individual, or maybe you have a woman's group or some organization. Maybe you have a daughter, or maybe you'd like your wife or exactly. your sister or family member, I would think. And again, we think fitness, we think about young women jumping around doing aerobics and whatever. How about a woman who's 55, 60 years old, 65 years old? How, what could you, is it worth her enrolling or coming to take a class? You got something for her? Absolutely. Uh, not only do I have something for her, I think we can also take her to another level. Um, I have a sister. I have uh, females in my life who I want to make sure that they have the skills and training necessary to make sure that they are successful. So uh, there are basic components that you can learn. See, look, let's be honest. There's only five things that you really need to know in order to be proficient in self-defense. The ability to punch, the ability to kick, the ability to throw, the ability to grapple, and the ability to what's called a timmy, which is striking uh, vulnerable parts of the body. So what I do is kind of like going to the uh, banquet bar where you have all this food out there. I pick and let you allow to pick the things that work for you mm -hmm. that are able to help you to get where you need to be, and we reinforce those skills to make you better at what you're doing as well as the awareness. So you will learn a little bit about stretching. You will learn a little bit about how to kick, how to punch, how to throw. Not that you're going to be going anything professionally, but there are basic, simple things that you can learn. 70-year-old woman. 70-year-old woman, I can show her two or three basic techniques that when applied properly will help get her out of a situation. If she has a cane, I can make her lethal. Oh, I like that. I like that. I, li I like that. Okay, now I'm just going to take it. She's on a walker. What, 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 can, what can you do with that? Walker, um, I would not necessarily use that particular tool okay. as a weapon, yeah. but there are things that she can use because, granted, I've worked with people in wheelchairs. Okay. So, I mean, if my brother, well, I have a brother who's uh, in and out of a wheelchair. Okay. And he even posed that question to me. So I took the time to develop skills that will work for people regardless of their situation. Okay. But always keep in mind it is awareness is where it starts. So when you join our program, we're going to work with you. We're going to work with you on your physical level. We're going to also talk to you about nutrition. We're going to make sure that you understand how that fits in. But when we come to the self-defense application, we're going to work on tried and true basic techniques. I don't teach anything that I have not used or would not use. So I don't believe in a lot of things that people just throw out there because they're pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to show you how good I am. I'm showing you how good you can be. And something that just might save your life. Absolutely. Man. And, you know, and I know it, this is this is more female oriented, these classes. And this I, I talked with Dr. Gurdine and it was, it was just there was a series of events where of, of tragedies around town where young women were just accosted and and shot or or, or the a victim of some violent crime uh and uh, this uh, he, according to him this is what motivated him and to have this discussion and set up this kind of training thing something that young women young probably ought to even be taught in the public schools or i agree I, uh, or some some I kind agree. of way that um uh, p people ought to be, you know, armed certainly, with, certainly. With, with this kind of knowledge, you know what I'm saying? But you also teach, you know, t things like when to not go into a garage or a public garage and, and things, the things that you just, you hate to, how could I say, you hate to live in that kind of world, but it's the world that we live in. Right. And, you know, one thing to keep in mind, too, um, knowing how to use your car keys, mm -hmm. knowing how to use a pen an ink pen, a pencil. I can show you how to take common everyday items that we have with us all day long and know how to convert them into tools for self-defense. So save your life. Save your life or someone else's or life. Or someone else's you. life, yeah. So it's important that we first have a good attitude and also know how to use the things that we have with us. And again, that, uh, that uh, 
that uh, class will begin at, uh, I mean, it's going on now. It's ongoing now. It's ongoing now. It happens at the West End Rehab uh, Rehabilitation Center, at, uh, Rehab and, and Fitness Center, Dr. Michael Gerding, chiropractor at uh, Pershing and Union. And the phone number there is 314-361-4650. Okay. And one last thing I'd like to say, kids out there, young people, parents with children, grandchildren, those bullies, there's a big problem with bullies out there. I do work with the kids as well to give them the skills, give them the mental awareness and the judgment to know when and how. And I think it's important. I had a son one time who was attacked at school. He defended himself, and, it, and the principal was upset because he defended himself. Her suggestion was that he should have just got beaten and then ran and told her. I said, well, that doesn't work in my family. Well, yeah. you're changing to training commandos. Maybe I am, but okay. my children are going to be safe. Yeah, and we want your children to be safe, and we want you to be safe. Hey, I want to thank you, uh, Keith. I mean, mind if I call you Keith? I don't okay. mind at all. I'm, I'm going to call you whatever you want. That's to call you I'm with you. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to get knocked out of it. No, but seriously, <laughs> no, you ain't to be messed with. I, folk, I, I seriously hope you took this information. This is, this. if you know, you've got some people in your family that might be vulnerable, you yourself. I'd give them a call at 361-4650. It might be worth it to go to a class or two and, and learn something about some self-defense kind of techniques, some situations to avoid. It. It's never too late. If you're Albert, if you're not going out of the house, maybe you don't have to worry about it so much. But if you are going to move around in, in, the, in this society, in our community, you might need some of these skills. Listen, I want to thank you again. Major Williams, I want to thank all of you who participated in today's program. Thank our engineer, Howard. Does a fantastic job. Between he and Peyton, we got the best. And I want to invite you to join us tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You all take care. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. Thank you.